The current Philips Hue and Samsung SmartThings integration sucks. We don't get to use Philips Hue scenes and we have to control lights individually. It often creates this popcorn effect when we use Hue lights and automations, but today I get to show you a new integration method that works much better. In fact, here's it controlling an entire room at once and activating a Hue scene at the same time. With the current integration, we don't get things like the Philips Hue tap dial switch or the Lutron Aurora or any of your other accessories coming into SmartThings from Philips Hue. But the new integration gives me access to these remotes and I can control any other smart home device that I have in Samsung SmartThings, like this IKEA light bulb. Today, Samsung SmartThings has a limitation where it only allows 200 devices in the app and your Hue lighting can fill a massive amount of that. So today I'll show you not only how this integration works, but how it can save you from hitting that 200 device limit and how you can do so much more, including this new blinking light automation. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and my job here on the channel is to save you time with smart tech. So if you love that idea, hit the subscribe button. Let's get into how we set this up, which actually just takes a few seconds. What you're gonna need is the link down below in the description that takes you to the Blue Yeti's post on the community boards for Samsung SmartThings. What he's done is he's created this edge driver that is a little ahead of its time. See, this edge driver accesses the Hue API, which will be used in the future to integrate these two platforms. So it's possible that you would eventually get all of these features if you just wait for the full rollout from Philips Hue, but I think they're gonna hold some things back, some features and some devices. So I like what's being done here. And once you're at those community boards, you're gonna find a link that takes you to an edge driver channel. You have to choose to enroll your SmartThings hub in this channel, and then you have to go into the available drivers. Here, you'll have to find the Philips Hue LAN control driver and hit the install button. Yes, you will need a SmartThings hub in order to take advantage of this. That's a requirement and there's no way around it because edge drivers are installed physically on hubs and then everything's run locally in your home on that hub. And once you've done that simple process on either your phone or a computer, you're able to enter the SmartThings app and go to the devices page in order to add a new device. Just hit the scan option and what will happen is your Philips Hue hub will be found by this new edge driver. The really wild thing here is that you can still have your existing integration with Philips Hue. So you can test this out and get it working before you go and delete that old integration. So yes, you will have two Philips Hue hubs in your SmartThings app for a time being, but you'll notice some pretty big differences right away. The first big difference is that your older integration method with the Hue hub just has an edit and an information option in the menu on the hub's device page. But this new method has both a driver, which is gonna show you the information for that edge driver we just installed, and it has a settings tab. That one setting I would leave turned on because it's gonna give you access to some of those things you saw at the start of today's video. But before we get to the other controls on this page, you do have to link your hub and through the initial scan process, you didn't hit the pairing button that exists on top of the Philips Hue hub, but as you hit the gear icon to link your hub and then you start the linking process, you will have to run to that Philips Hue hub and hit that pairing button. Then it will connect the Hue hub to the device sitting in SmartThings and then that will activate the other controls on the page. The on and off button is a toggle for all of the Philips Hue lights in your home. It's actually an amazing control to have on its own because at the end of the night, you'd use that in a routine to turn everything off. The dimmer control is the same thing too, so you can set the dimming level of all the lights in your home with one swipe. But the most important control on this page is at the bottom. This will allow you to add additional Philips Hue devices into your SmartThings app. 
Now you'll notice it's broken down into the different types of devices you'll have. But what I would recommend you start with is rooms or zones. The reason I say that is because I'm betting in a lot of cases, you don't want to add all of the individual lights into your SmartThings app. And if you hit that add lights button, you'll add them all to the SmartThings app and that's gonna be a lot. Now there's a better way to add lights. So just hang on and start with the rooms. Understand that as you hit the button to add rooms to SmartThings, that they will pop up in the same room as your Hue Hub has been added to. So for me, I had my Hue Hub in the office room in SmartThings, and as I hit that, it started to populate these rooms in the office room. Where it's pulling these rooms and their associated names from is in the Hue application. So you'll find that this exactly mirrors what you have in that app. Zones are managed in exactly the same way, and yes, you can add both rooms and zones into smart things anytime you'd like. Now I'm gonna enter into one of the rooms that has been added in my smart things app, and what you'll notice is that you now have a few additional controls. The on and off button turns on all of the lights in that room or zone. The dimmer switch does the same, and you have a timer feature if you wanna use those. However, there is a little star next to the word favorites, and these are your Philips Hue scenes. They have been brought in from the list of scenes that you have created in the Philips Hue app. If you're finding that this option is grayed out, or you're ever finding that the scenes won't execute for you in routines, understand that you probably have too many scenes. When I spoke with the Blue Yeti, he told me that he had about 70 scenes in the entire Philips Hue app. And you should understand that scenes do come across from things like motion sensors and these other controllers you have. So I had about 115 in the app when I went through and counted, and it was just too many, so I ran into that issue. But as soon as I cut those down and got rid of some, the favorites started to sink and they have worked flawlessly since. So within each room or zone, you can now pick a hue scene and execute that. Plus the automation options you get with this are very comprehensive. So let me roll you through those options in routines. Of course, you can use the rooms or zones as triggers, but all you're going to get is the on or off status. So uh, whether it's change status, an on or an off, or this dimming option as a trigger. However, the action side of these routines become such a powerful thing with this edge driver. You can choose all of the regular things that you normally would with a toggle, an on or an off uh, action, you can adjust the brightness or the dimming level, choose colors or color temperature, and of course you can delay the actions for a set period of time, or you can automatically turn them off after a certain period of time. But there are two new options, including the ability to play a favorite. This is a word text box that you can type into in order to add any of the names of your Philips Hue scenes. So I'm in the bedroom, I know I have this scene called Nightlight, I can use that scene by hitting OK after typing it in. Uh, it doesn't matter if you've put a capital in the name, it just has to be accurate to the scene in the Philips Hue app. The other option that you can use is this alert option, which allows the lights to blink on and off for a few seconds. Now I've noticed that some of my non Philips Hue lighting branded fixtures or lights blink for less of a time versus a true Philips Hue product. But other than that, this is something that people have been after for a long time as an option in automations. So now that you've seen what you can do with those rooms and zones, you go ahead, organize things as you see fit in the SmartThings app, but they become a full room lighting control option for you. You can also use the add lights button at the bottom of each room's device page. This is the better method that I was talking about earlier and why I don't think you should do it from the Philips Hue Hubs device page when you go to add individual lights. Using this add devices button and choosing the lights here will add only the lights that are in that room or zone 
to your SmartThings app. So this is giving you the opportunity to separate out those bulbs if you want those as a separate control item. And it's not filling your app with every bulb from the Hue app. With this edge driver, if you do break out the lights, then you might get some different controls, including some Philips Hue scenes. Now, I'll show you where those come from, but they are often dynamic scenes if they're available. You're always gonna have the on and dimmer and color control if you have a color light, but non-color bulbs will just look like this. Here I am in the SmartThings app, and when I go to choose a favorite, you can see I can pick from candle or fire. It's gonna execute that based on the settings in the Philips Hue app. Here are the fireplace and the candle effects. So how do you tell if a bulb's going to have one of these scenes? If you hit this button and there are effects listed, it's gonna get those controls in SmartThings. Otherwise, you'll see this screen and the bulb won't have any favorites. The next improvements come in the form of other controllers that you have in the Philips Hue app. For myself, I have both this Lutron Aurora and the Philips Hue tap dial switch. Today with the basic integration, you can't get either of those to work with SmartThings, but this method allows you to add that from the hubs page. You'll see that option here, and again, that will add those devices to the same room that the hub is in. Then you can go and find them and configure those devices for both presses and holds on the different buttons that they have. Now here's the Lutron Aurora. You can see it goes toggled down and then pressed. And if I hold the button, you can see it goes to held. Both of those are actions that I can assign very basic responses to. So here's the control working with that. And this is an Ikea filament light. This is not a light that's supposed to be workable with something like the Lutron Aurora. I can also use the device inside of routine. So I can use the pressed, the held, or the battery to start a routine separately from those basic actions. So it can be included in more complex routines. The same thing is possible for the Hue Tap Dial Switch, but this one gets even crazier because not only do I have the different buttons and a press and hold on all four, of those different buttons. But I also have the ability to swipe left and to swipe right with this. Now you can't do the exact percentage control with this, but this does give you a couple of different settings that you can set with the dial. And it's the first time that dial has been available outside of any other system than Philips Hue. Now the Philips Hue motion sensors are also improved through this integration, which is saying a lot. Like these motion sensors, they already work fairly well. And that's especially true when they're paired with the Philips Hue hub. But this gets you a few extra options and some improved performance. Today, if you take a Philips Hue motion sensor and you pair it directly with a Samsung SmartThings hub, you'll find that the cool down time is 30 seconds. That means you'd have to wait 30 seconds after triggering the motion sensor for it to go back to no motion detected or for it to re-trigger to motion detected again. The cool down when paired with a Philips Hue hub directly is only 10 seconds though. So this becomes a much more sensitive device in your home. The other reason that this is better is because you're getting access to all of the sensors on this device. And that includes both the temperature and the illuminance. My Philips Hue motion sensor has an on and an off switch. So currently, just because I hit that off switch, it is bypassed, which means I can't get it to say that motion was detected, even if someone's in front of it. And that's a very unique feature. Of course, when I turn it back on, motion detected, it, it comes on, it works like normally. Within routines, look at how many different statuses I have access to. I can even tell uh, if this has been turned on or off through another automation or someone has turned it on or off to bypass the device. And I can use that as a trigger 
for my routines. On the action side, I can turn it on or off. So you could turn this on or off only if you're uh, out of the house or your whole family's out of the house. You could synchronize it with the security system or the smart home monitor. Now, there's even more here and this integration method will continue to get better if you join in the conversation on the community boards for Samsung Smart Things. We should probably all thank the Blue Yeti for this because this is way ahead of its time and with it saving all of those devices in Smart Things, it's going to open the door for you to further expand your smart home. If you need more help with Samsung Smart Things, then check out the playlist that's up on screen because it'll teach you more tricks just like this. Otherwise, thanks for watching today, and of course, don't hate, automate.